Welcome to Jackets TV presented by Ohio Health. I'm Bob McElligot, joined today by Blue Jacket centerman Ryan Johansson. I'm going to go a little one-on-one -on -one here today. Does that scare you at all? <laughs> no, no, I'm not used to it. <laughs> it might. <laughs> Give me two minutes. All right. Uh, let's just talk about your overall game right now. I mean, you have really started to blossom this year. If I was to ask you, can you nail it down to one reason why this third year has been so different from the first two? Can you give me one reason? I'd have to go just experience, whether it's in the league, with line mates, with teammates, um, you know, just being around the game at the NHL level for three years now and, and kind of being through it all, it feels like. And, uh, you know, just keep been uh, kept on taking strides in these three years and trying to get to where I want to be as a player. And uh, you know, I think so. Experience would be the one word that uh, I think has just helped me of uh, taking these steps to where I've wanted to get and and where I'm at right now. So you feel kind of like finally you belong. I mean, last year was a weird year. First of all, you had the lockout, but then you were here, then you went back to Springfield, then you were here, then you were in Springfield for the playoffs. So do you feel like this is where you belong now and you've hopefully finally established yourself here? Yes. No, I, f I feel definitely like a big part of this team, and, and uh, you know, which is a good feeling. Like, like you were just saying, the first two years, it was kind of all over the place, so it's nice to, you know, have a second home, you could say. All right, you talked about line mates and being comfortable with them. R.J. Umberger and Nick Foligno, for the most part, have been your line mates, and, and that goes back to last year, not just this year. Mm -hmm. What is it about those guys? Why have you found such a good working relationship with those two guys? What do they do that helps you? I think we're all pretty similar players, big bodies. You know, like to play down low with the puck, and uh, you know, it seems like we're all just ever since we were put together from the, the first time as a line. It seems like we're just connected really well and uh, we're always kind of on the same page and know where each other's at uh, most of the time and um, you know it's it's been a lot of fun playing with those two and, and we've had pretty good success in, in our time playing together. And it seems to me like just watching the three of you that they are at a point where they know they go in the corners they dig it out they cycle and they know where you're going to be they know you're going to be sitting in a position where if they get you the puck you're going to shoot it. Yeah uh, you know I, I feel like they, they, they've been getting me the puck all year, all the time. So uh, it's you know my job to try and find areas, or when I have the puck, find them, and uh, you know, and vice versa. So um, you know, I feel like those two have been just setting me up all year, and, uh, and it's been a lot of fun. We've been getting a lot of scoring chances, and uh, you know, which carries over to having fun in those games, and uh, you know, creating offense for our team. This, isn't this a much better conversation than when I'd come to you like last year and say, Ryan, you're doing so well defensively. How nice would it be to put the puck in the net? This year, that's not a problem. You're putting the puck in the net. But also, I think it's important to point out that your defense, but you and those two guys, your defense and your shutdown abilities, that hasn't taken a backseat to anything you do. Yeah, I, I think obviously we still have a ways to go on where we want to be at, but that's just having high expectations for ourselves. and. Um, but you know our, our defensive game is pretty good. We've we've played against a lot of top players in this league this year and and top lines and uh, you know for the most part I thought we've we've been pretty successful and it's it's not an easy thing to do night in and night out. So um, you know it's things we we try and work on every day and, and improve at. It's been a tough season in some regards. It's been an up and down season, I guess what I should say. And you know being one of the younger guys and going through some of this for the first time. It seems like you start feeling good about yourselves and then maybe you have a setback like that 6-2 to two loss in St. Louis. But then you bounce back and you get the shootout win in New York. So experiencing that, is it something that, um, it's almost like you can never feel too good about yourselves yep. because that's when you get that reality check. Yeah, something my dad always said to me coming up the ranks in junior is you never get too high and never get too low. And, it's so important uh, in this league, and you know, like you said, the hiccup we had in St. Louis there uh, is to just forget about it and refocus, and which we did. And we had a huge, uh, huge uh, road road win against New York uh, to finish off that road trip. So um, it's you know, obviously, you want to learn from your mistakes in those games, and but it, it's very important to move on and and you know have your mindset on your next game. All right, let's not forget about how you won that game in New York. I mean, it goes to a shootout. 
Mark Letestu goes in, and yeah, he buries the first shot, but it comes down onto your shoulders if you score the game's over. <laughs> and you went in there. How much do you think about your move in a shootout? Because it was pretty nifty what you did against Henrik Lundqvist. Are you planning that going out there, or are you picking up the puck at center ice and starting to skate in and <laughs> seeing what he's giving you? What's the mindset? Yeah, I really struggled with shootouts uh, and the chances I've had. I don't, I don't know the exact number I've taken, but my percentage isn't where I want it to be. So, you know, Mark obviously took a lot of pressure off myself, and 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 you know, I just have a couple moves trying, trying, been working on practice and whatnot, and. No, those were one of the ones I liked, and uh, you know, I just said, whatever, let's let's go there and see what happens. <laughs> well, obviously, Todd Richards still has confidence in you putting in <laughs> that uh, lineup of three. Yeah, so you know, I thought I I owe him one by putting one in the net. So it was, it was nice to see that one go in. You know, speaking of confidence from your coach, how nice is it when you know you're going to get your minutes if you if you do the things you're supposed to do? You know you're going to play. You know you're going to play in important situations. You know, we were talking about your overall adjustment and your experience, but knowing that, does that help to give you a little peace of mind too? Yeah, I mean, if I'm if I'm working and moving my feet, I, I know I'm going to get those opportunities and games to help our team win and whatever, if it's power play or key situations, five on five, late in games or starting the game, whatever. And, um, you know, for myself, as with the experience we've been talking about, it's just being ready for each and every single game and and uh, you know, having that focus and and, and confidence that I'm going to play my game uh, every time I step on the ice. So, uh, you know, I've been you know thankful enough to have the opportunity to play with Fligs and Umby and and play a high role this year. So, um, just going to you know keep making the most of it and try and do everything we can to to win hockey games. Well, a couple of minutes ago, you mentioned your dad, and I know your dad's been <laughs> a very big part of your hockey career in junior and, and here in the NHL, and he's somebody you rely upon, and you probably get advice whether you ask for it or not. <laughs> uh, but also, you have a younger brother mm -hmm. who uh, who has uh, a lot of potential in his own right. Maybe you get to play against him here someday <laughs> or play with him someday in this league. Who knows? But having those two there, um, <laughs> do you get... How, how difficult is that sometimes? Because I'm sure you get praise, but you get criticism too. <laughs> yeah, no. <clears throat> I call my call my family after every single game, and and sometimes if I have a bad game, I'll come, I'll I'll say, hey, how's it going? And I'll hear my brother just laughing in the background because he he knows I had a bad game or something. But uh, you know, it's always constructive criticism, and you know, I, I always uh, take in what my little brother says too. He he knows the game pretty well, and. You know, obviously he's learning a lot coming through uh, his ranks right now and, and playing major midget and stuff, but, uh, you know, they they know the game really well and it's uh, always soak in what they have to say. Probably takes the pressure off him, right? Because now your dad has you to get on instead of getting <laughs> on him after if he had a bang. Yeah, exactly. He, he sees it firsthand. <laughs> How much do you appreciate, though, that I'm sure to an extent you're a role model for your brother? I mean, you're both playing the same game. You're playing it at the NHL level. He wants to get to this level. Um, what's... How do you feel about that? Just having that little brother that you know is looking up to you uh, as a person, as a man, and as a hockey player. Yeah, I, I take a I try and take a big responsibility with that, and and trying to help help him with life or whatever it is. And you know, when I'm back home in the summers, it's you know try and do whatever I can to help him, whatever it may be. You know, and um, you know it's it's difficult being out in Ohio, and he's in. Vancouver, but uh, you know, like like we were just talking, you know, on the phone after games, we're always talking and texting back and forth or whatever it may be. And um, you know, I've had a few talks with him and, and his game uh, this year and, and where he's at and where I think he can be or where he needs to be. And uh, you know, he he seems like he he really listens to what I have to say and what my what my dad has to say, and uh, which is very important at that young age. And um, you know, I I. I didn't have the best uh, junior career or, or starting off ju in my junior career and uh, you know the message for him and for a lot of young players is you know it's not going to happen overnight you have to work at your game and uh, you know it's, it's going to take a little bit of luck to get to this level and, and a lot of hard work so uh, but you know I think he's taking a lot of great strides and, and he's on the right track. When you and he get on the ice together <laughs> what's it like? <laughs> competitive. <laughs> well, I imagine that. Uh, we, yeah, we've always been really competitive growing up and 
playing whatever it is, street hockey, soccer, it could be anything, you know, and, uh, you know, we always want to beat each other, and, and, you know, I think that's where he gets his competitive edge from. This week, uh, the Olympic teams were announced for all the nations, and uh, Team Canada's roster, of course, came out. It's a, uh, it's a very deep roster. There are guys that are not on the roster people think should be, and maybe guys that are that people think shouldn't be, uh, whatever. You've played for the national team. You've played for Team Canada in the World Junior. Um, how much would you like someday that uh, that Olympic list comes out and your name's on it? Oh, it would be a dream come true. And you see some videos of, of guys, for example, they have Tavares when he, he found out he made the team telling his family and stuff. And I, you know, I, I look at that as, as something that's definitely going to be a goal four years uh, down the road. And it would be a huge dream come true to have an opportunity to put the Canadian sweater on again. And, um, you know, it's it's for me in the, the World Juniors, like you just said, that was my most memorable hockey experience for sure. And, and uh, having all my family out in Buffalo and all the Canadian fans uh, traveling uh, just across the border there. And, and you know, th those times are, you know, still fresh in my mind. What is the difference? I mean, what... You know, what is that feeling of just pulling on that Canadian sweater and knowing that you're playing for your country? Because, you know, one thing about all of you guys, I don't care what country you're from, everybody in this sport takes great pride in that. And, and really, I know all the guys that are going to the Olympics are looking forward to playing for their country. What is, uh, you know, what kind of clicks in when you pull that sweater over your head? Just the history of the game is, you know, what first comes to my mind. and uh, Growing up and you know, seeing Gretzky and Lemieux playing the other highlights and, uh, you know, I think it was 94 where they won in Salt Lake there and where they had the Looney in the center ice and just things like that. It's just the history of it and all those memories and, and now on the, and when they won it in Vancouver and stuff and on uh, home soil and uh, it's just it's just the memories of the game and it only happens every four years so it's it makes it that much more special. And, uh, it's cool to see all the countries come together and and, and root root for the their own country and uh, it's very it's a very exciting time for hockey. All right, you mentioned about playing at World Juniors in Buffalo and a lot of Canadian fans came, so there was a lot of pressure. You had a lot of people <laughs> that were pushing for you guys to win. You've got four teammates on this team: Fedor Tutin, Nikita Nikitin, Sergei Bobrovsky, and Artem Anisimov that are going to play in the Olympics for Team Russia in their own country. Can you imagine what kind of pressure that's going to be for those guys? Yeah, it's it's uh, very exciting. They're going to be gods there. So, uh, I mean, it's just like all the Canadians playing in Vancouver. I'm sure there was quite a bit of pressure there as well, uh, especially when it went to overtime in the final game. So, um, you know, that that comes with the game. That's that's uh, that's what makes our job fun. Is we have to go out and execute in front of in front of those types of crowds. So. Um, you know that's what makes it so so memorable and uh, and so exciting like we were just talking about as well and uh, very it's a very special time media and fans look at these olympic teams and they break them down and who got snubbed or you know <laughs> who you know you know just trying to analyze the whole thing do you guys as players have similar conversations <laughs> i guess so i mean <laughs> You know, we, we have our own opinions and, you know, we see players around the league maybe differently than some other players and, uh, you know, I think uh, everybody's like that. Uh, you know, I thought a couple guys could have made it, could have not. Uh, I remember seeing somebody posted, I think it was on Twitter, uh, uh, it would be a second Canadian team. They put all the cuts together on a team and we were kind of laughing. We are like, well, we thought that they could even compete in the Olympics. It was, it was a pretty imp impressive uh, a team that they could still have. Yeah, no, absolutely right. You also had the other situation, too, where uh, Jack Johnson and Brandon Dubinsky were very hopeful they would make Team USA, and they didn't. And, and that's going to be disappointing for them. So there you are in that same dressing room where you have one group of guys that's really happy about going and another couple of guys mm -hmm. that are probably very disappointed. Yeah, I mean, obviously two unbelievable players in this league and, and so important to our hockey club. And, uh, you know, it just shows how how much talent there is around our league uh, when those guys don't make it, and um, you know, so you know, you never know what can happen with injuries if they get an opportunity to go still, or 
or four years again down the road. So, um, but definitely they're they're definitely up there at the top of of this league as uh, elite players. How much would you like if you were to make the Olympic team someday? That Cam Atkinson would make the U.S. Olympic team <laughs> at the same time, and that you could go head to head. That would be pretty cool. Because I, mean. I know you guys are pretty tight. So. Yeah, yeah, no, that'd be that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, I guess all the Russians this year they're on the same team, which is also pretty cool. And for for our teammates, so uh, but it'd be cool to, on that kind of stage to play against your teammates and uh, definitely be a lot of fun. Do you think it's going to be a big challenge to take those three weeks off? Not that you'll have the entire time off. There'll be some practice time, but. That's going to be a considerable gap in not having games. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a big thing for when we finish our break and coming back and practicing and making sure our, our focus is, you know, back on hockey. And, you know, I, I think at the same time it's very important that for the guys that aren't going to the Olympics that, you know, we get our rest and recover. And, and it's going to be huge uh, coming down that stretch and with our bodies being healthy. And, I mean, you look at all the injuries we've had this year and, and guys get a little extra time to recover, but uh, so I think it's you know it's going to be beneficial. But at the same time, we have to make sure when we get back, we're we're getting ready to make our, our big playoff push. Speaking of injuries, Nathan Horton finally is back on the ice. <laughs> He's been around all year. I, I think they've done a great job of making sure that he was around you guys, so that the off the ice chemistry was already there. But for you, watching this guy come in over the summer and now finally getting a chance to see him play. What does it mean to you to have him as a teammate? You know, he's he's an unbelievable teammate. You could ask any other guys in the room that, and I'm sure they'd say the same thing. And uh, now I, I've watched him a lot before. He's been on TV in a lot of playoff series. So um, you know, he's just talking about Jack and Doobie, and he's another one of those elite players who who's uh, you know really proved himself in this league and. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to watch in practice and in games, and, and it's going to be a huge help for our team. And you know, you saw it in our first game, getting the game-winning goal. So, um, you know, we're our whole team is very excited to have him back and and on our squad. And uh, you know, he's going to be a big part of our team uh, c coming through the, the rest of this year. Yeah. You know, now, as I think about it, if he were playing on another team, you would probably have the assignment to try to <laughs> shut him down. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be an easy one either. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't be. Um, last year, you guys had an incredible run to the end of the season. And some may say that you can't do that two years in a row. But having already experienced it, is there a confidence that if you start getting some wins and stringing, stringing them together, that you can start to put some pressure on some of these uh, teams that are above you in the Metropolitan Division? 100%. I'm kind of frustrated we haven't done it yet. You know, we... we we have it. All, we have all the tools in our room, and it's you know you got to credit other teams around the league though that you know they, there's a lot of teams that play very good hockey. So it's it wasn't an easy thing that we did at the end of last year. We had a lot of luck, and you know, but our hard work was paying off at the same time. And uh, you know, our team has taken a lot of strides in this last month, I think too, and, and we're definitely working in the right direction. To be coming or getting on a roll like that that we had last year, so uh, we're very close to winning a bunch of hockey games or stringing a few together. So um, a big weekend for us coming up here, having Carolina and Winnipeg back to back. So um, it'd be nice to get four points this weekend. And I think one thing that happened last year is I don't know if everybody took you seriously because you were kind of under the radar. Mm -hmm. This year, everybody's going to have the antenna up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think we've seen it even this year. Teams have been ready for us, and and uh, you know, even even sometimes I think they get still a little surprised at how good of team we can be when we're on our game. And um, you know, it's a it's it's a good feeling though seeing uh, other teams notice that you know you know your team or our hockey club has taken a lot of strides, and and we're moving in the right direction for sure. So. Uh, I think for sure they've been taking notice of, uh, of the way our team's improved, and um, you know, which is a good feel. Earning respect. Yeah, there it is. Earning respect, and that's what you get by winning and having success. Ryan, thank you very much. Always great to sit down and talk to you. This might be the most serious conversation I've ever had. <laughs> I know, it was weird, huh? Yeah, it was really weird. We've got to get yeah. back to being ourselves right, here. Tomorrow we'll do something. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> that's Ryan Johansson. I'm Bob McElligot, and thanks for watching Jackets TV, presented by Ohio Health.